good for one is good for the other. So if we are selfish as humans, uh, when we evolve to the place of reconnecting, remembering our oneness, then our selfishness actually assists all of humanity. Yeah, I, you know, I experienced that here in this dimension in that, uh, you know, when I work with others, uh, I, I do it, I don't charge for it. And, uh, but <coughs> it's not altruistic completely. You know, it's like uh, there's a payoff for me. I get, uh, I get joy. I learn more about myself and I deal with my own issues or feelings and emotions that oh, I, I, I think you called it my, uh, my inner, uh, I forget the term, but that's a payoff for me. That's why I do that. Uh, I think, I really believe we were, we were created uh, self-centered. I don't, I, I've never met anybody that's not. Um, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about it, but um, and if we if we our self, our highest self is God, then we should be self-centered. But just in a in a larger expanded understanding of that. Absolutely, and it, and it makes everything different when that happens. It's uh, and without that self-centeredness, uh, Sheila, we, we couldn't exist as a, as a species or as an individual, uh, at least in this plane. Uh, we, you know, we would have gotten eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or something. Exactly. Right. Well, and the same, I use the word, you know, that's how I refer to the ego, but the ego is our primitive self that kept us alive as a human race long enough to get to this point of exploring our oneness. So it was perfect. I, yeah, and I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to talk with you here in a little bit about the ego because that's, uh, for many people, that's a real confusing issue. Um the, the 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 thing that's on my mind right now is 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 uh, w one of the things that, that you say is that we in order to to uh, to evolve spiritually to uh, to grow into our larger self is that we need to disengage from old patterns that no longer serve us. Certainly, that's been the case for me. Yeah, but the thing that I wonder about is just hearing that I need to disengage from uh, an old pattern doesn't seem to be sufficient to really bring that change about, even though I might want to change. Wh what do you do? How does that, you know, how do you bring about that change in your work, through your work? I, I know as a, as a therapist, you, you must have had some kind of a, of a methodology. But, but as, a, as a channeler, how does that work? why I moved further than therapy because knowing it doesn't change it. No, no. Energy itself does. And I think a lot of times it's what happens beyond the words. So sometimes when we go into a meditation, when I lead people into a meditation, they're taking their mind. I, you know, I just said that to someone recently. Give your mind something to do. You know, that's why the guided meditation. Let it entertain all. itself, huh? It entertains itself, <laughs> and it's like getting in the back door because now we're not thinking about the problem but a metaphor for it and resolving it beyond our own internal language. The energy itself, so when I channel Magdalene or Isis, the words that they say are important. The energy that flows through is more important. Right. So the vibration that actually comes through me when I'm bringing forth a channel, I believe, is more important than the words. And if you look back at the day that I remember Magdalene coming to me for the first time, the things she said weren't that great, right? But right. the vibration of her touching me was what transformed me and kept me moving. And, and so uh, so that, that encounter, that initial encounter, I suspect it's an ongoing thing with you, actually started this inner transformation that's ongoing today with you then. Right, and and w you also talk about the need for forgiveness, and uh, I think that's huge in in our uh, evolution, in our personal evolution, in our spiritual growth. What do you? How do you teach someone who has a, a fierce resentment for a, an ex partner or, you know, or or whatever it might be, forgiveness? I mean, w how do you get them to that place? You know, it's a lot. It, it well, I don't want to say it's a long process because with energy we can move faster than we imagine. You're right. But it's a process. And honestly, the process is about 
learning to love yourself. Because what Magdalene showed me years ago, it, she loves to play with words and twist them around just a little bit to give them their meaning. Uh -huh. She showed me years ago that forgiveness or forgiven is you e actually given for us. And when we reach a point in our life where we are so happy with our life and who we are and we love ourselves and we're using the law of attraction to bring to us everything that is perfect in our desire, then we can look back at everything that's happened to us and truly know that it was given for us because we love who we are so much right now that we wouldn't change a thing. And we understand then that on a soul level, everyone that we thought harmed us actually assisted us in getting to this place. But we can't fully get to that place until we love ourselves. And that is a full process. And that is something that is not done simply in meditation. It can be done to some degree in meditation. And there's so much energy to assist us. But we have to face our emotion. And I think a lot of people on the spiritual journey believe that there are good emotions and bad emotions. And if I'm going to be a spiritual person, I'm going to be peaceful. And I'm going to huh. be gentle. R right. And anger is not good, fear, and they push it away. In reality, in order to truly be peace, we have to delve into those energies that we are thinking are bad or negative. Negative, right. They're exactly what we need to do in order to transform them. So when you look into the, um, the emotions, then you can see that Anger becomes passion. Fear becomes hope when we actually move into them and transform them. So our job is to get down to the dirty and, and deal with our emotions so that we can love ourselves, love our life, create the life we want, and then give thanks to the people who helped us get there. I, you know, I think uh, that part of uh, our spiritual growth is, is one area that gets bypassed by so many different uh belief system churches what have you you know and and you see it played out all the time in in the congregation and in the you know the the uh, management part of the church uh, you know they'll have all kinds of conflicts going on and people uh, ha aren't working with their emotions or their feelings at all and i believe we we get victimized by our own feelings and emotions until we start looking at them and start understanding more about why we're feeling them what our what our motives in them uh, uh, the things that we're doing uh, and, and so it sounds like you, you, you must work a lot in that area with folks also. I, I do, and I think that is why I was guided in the early years to do the therapy because I got to really go deeply and explore emotions. Right. So now I can bring it all together and help people. And the other thing um, is that because I've done my own work and because I am so comfortable now with emotions, I can hold that space for other people to explore. Absolutely. Because when they look at me, even if they're yelling at me, they're putting me down or whatever they want to do, you know, I'm just going to love them back. And that's what the Ascended Masters do for us. You know, we can we can scream at the spirit guides all we want. And they're just going to smile and love us and be happy for us because we're actually getting our emotion out. So the more work I do for myself, the more I can hold that space for others to explore that. And and the more of us that can hold that for others, the more the world can move through this quicker. So I don't think that the speed with which it has taken, you know, the first line to get into this and understand that is the speed with which the world's going to transform. I think it's much more like a tidal wave that will just keep picking up momentum. It seems to be that way, doesn't it? It's, you know, I, I look back to, you know, 35 or 40 years ago when I first started with this, and, and it's, it's been picking up momentum. Uh, and I think that, that it's a hidden kind of a momentum, though, Sheila. I don't think it's, it's you know, I don't think it really has the uh, exposure that, that, uh, that it needs right at this point. And that's, that's part of why we're here. Uh, so, and, and, and you made a statement in, in one, of the, one of your writings that everything is God. And I totally believe that. Which, which means that Hitler was God. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And boy, people have a hard time swallowing that idea. Uh, but, but my experience with, with the emotions that you're talking about 
is when I, and the changes that you're, you refer to is 